time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready, we're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning, this is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with the man with the plan, chief investment officer for our firm, and happens to be my father, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this glorious March weekend? Ryan, I'm very anxious about your alma mater. You know, Villanova's got the Big East tournament this week, and I'm hoping they can reclaim their title. Oof, I don't know. They're not as hot this year as they were last year, so uh, we shall see. Unfortunately, I'm not going to get into the games of the Garden, but uh, I hope the Wildcats the best. Well, let's say that, you know, they last year they, they won the, the season. They lost the tournament. This year, maybe they'll win the tournament, even though they lost the season. So who knows? But anyway, go Wildcats. <laughs> go Wildcats. Well, we have a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about Apocalypse Now. The financial media loves to make catastrophic predictions about certain aspects of the economy and the market. Bob and I are going to discern between what is noise and what you really need to be concerned about. We're going to talk about lazy money. You have a lot of money sitting in cash and savings, earning little to no interest. This can be a big problem when creating an income plan for your retirement. We're going to discuss exactly why and how to put your cash to work, along with this week's financial propaganda, where we call out the worst advice the financial media has been recently broadcasting. And we have our spotlight segment today. We have my brother, Bob's son, Chris Payne on the show who's going to actually review and break down someone's real retirement plan for you. So it's an all pain, no pain, no gain. Let's hop to it. Bob, you know, one of your most famous Bobisms, as we like to call them here at Pain Capital, is the world doesn't end very often, which is true. However, the financial media loves to make apocalyptic predictions about the economy and the stock market. So which of these proclamations do you think have some merit and which ones do you think are just completely bogus, we'll say? And the first one being, the stock market has been rolling up for way too long. There's going to be a crash soon and it's going to be bad. Well, first of all, Ry, you know, I have said that the world doesn't end very often because that's the track record of the world. Uh, but, secondly, <laughs> yeah. but secondly, I never did say feels like the world's going to end. And that's exactly what it felt like 10 years ago today when the market bottomed after that horrific bear market. And we hit that uh, proverbial 666 on the S&P 500. It's been a yeah, heck of a ride believe. since then. That's crazy, right? To think that that 666 was exactly 10 years ago this past Wednesday. I mean, think about how much different the world felt at that moment when the market was at that low, low point. And to think, I mean, what's the percentage rise that we've seen since the bottom of the market 10 years ago? Oh, about 350 to 400%. Wow. That's incredible. That's incredible. I mean, we yeah, never so what did we learn, Rob? We learned that when it feels like the world's going to end, it's the best buying opportunity you can have since the world doesn't end very often. Yeah, exactly right. And I think the other thing, Bob, is you have to be really careful here is, you know, we, that's why we do financial propaganda every week is there's always proclamations out there that you know, this stock market it's coming to an end. We're going to see a big correction or a big sell-off soon. And we've been hearing that now for 10 years. And now we're at the second longest bull market of all time. And you're still hearing the same thing. If you would have taken that advice any time during the last 10 years, it would have been a bad decision because the market has continued to go higher. Well, what really bothers me about that statement is the stock market. What are they talking about, the stock market? Well, usually when the prognosticators are talking about the stock market, it's the U.S., large company market or the S&P 500. 500 stocks that represent the biggest companies in America, basically. Yeah, and they always miss the point that, you know, for example, this year, we're up 20% in small company growth stocks. Now, over a period of, of every month, Rai, you'll look at anywhere from, you know, 20 to 60 portfolios of people who are looking to hire us as their portfolio managers. And what percentage of those people even have a dime, even a penny? in small company stocks. It's amazing, right? Small cap stocks have dramatically outperformed large cap stocks over the long term, yet 
we probably don't have, we see it all the time. Like you said, Bob, we never see it in your portfolios, like ever. <laughs> so, uh, you know, having that diversification is a real key. You don't want to have your money in just quote unquote the market because there's a lot of markets out there. And to your point, Bob, small cap stocks are a better market than the US large cap market over the long term. That's exactly right, right? Nobody can predict when the market's going to go up or down. You know, market crashes are very infrequent. But if you just want to overcome that fear, diversify the living daylights out of your portfolio. Yes. Which brings me to my next apocalyptic prediction, Bob. Social Security is going broke and they're going to have to cut everyone's benefit. Is that true, Bob? Should we just plan not to have Social Security at this point? Well, it is true and false, right? First of all, it is broke. Um, (laughs) It's true. Secondly, they're not cutting anyone's benefit. Why is that, Bob? Is that because politicians know it's political suicide if they were to bring that up as a as a bill and their constituents would probably vote them out of office? Just a guess. Absolutely. It's it's definitely the third rail, as they say in, in, in politics. You want to ruin your career, you know, just electrocute yourself with that proclamation. But not only, <laughs> Rye, is this Congress not willing to address, you know, the problems with Social Security, they're actually putting out a bill called Social Security twenty one hundred Act, which increases benefits across the board for everybody. I love it. You know what, Bob? A twenty-two trillion dollar deficit's just not enough. <laughs> Let's add no, not some at all. more. And, and first of all, right, Social Security <laughs> came out sixty-five years ago, just in time for me to be born. So I'm all for it. So I'm uh, I'm rooting for this Congress. <laughs> well, I think the reality of it is, if you're planning right now, if you're close to retirement or in retirement, Social Security is probably here to stay. But if you're younger, like for instance, I'm forty-one years old. The, the reality is they're probably just going to keep pushing that age of eligibility out. I'll be 85 before I'm eligible for Social Security. My guess is that's probably more along the lines of how that play out as opposed to no benefits, Bob. Well, you know, that's what planning's about, right? Whether you're 65 or 41, it's about planning. And if someone doesn't plan, that, and that's all they're going to have is Social Security. You got to plan as having Social Security as part of your retirement income, not the sole source of that income. Yes, exactly right. Which leads me to my next apocalyptic prediction. We've all gotten used to interest rates being really low. So when the Fed raises rates, nobody will want to borrow money and the economy will grind to a halt. You hear a lot about this. So is higher interest rates really a bad thing, Bob, for the economy and your portfolio? Ry, you're living proof that they're not. I'm living proof. (laughs) How's that? I have no idea. The house you you grew up in, I bought when interest rates were at an all-time record high, and the bank very generously lent me money at 22% so you could have a home to grow up in. Wow. So you still borrowed money even with rates at 22%. So I think the other thing, Bob, is the bottom line is another thing you hear all the time is, well, if interest rates start going up, it's going to take the economy to a halt. But what we forget is if interest rates are going up, that means inflation is going up. That's because the economy is heating up, which is a good thing. So higher interest rates actually means that things are healthy, not unhealthy, which you never hear that from the pundits. Yeah, not only when interest rates were at all-time record highs when I bought that home, not only did the GDP grow, but it grew by trillions you know, over that 30-year period of time, right? So the fact of the matter is the economy grinds higher, interest rates are reflect inflation. And you know, last I looked, half the return that we make in your portfolio comes from dividends and interest. So I hope yes. you go to bed at night praying and hoping that rates go up, not down. Right, Ry? Exactly right. Exactly right. If you're thinking to yourself right now, I need to get my financial life in order. I can't be dependent on these apocalyptic predictions that are out there. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our famous total financial master plan. It's a full holistic retirement review where we look at the whole picture. Simply print those statements off the computer, or maybe they just came in for February, bring them in the office. We're going to build you your own personalized financial portal to give you a bird's eye view of your entire net worth. And we're going to look at all the critical components. We're going to look at everything from fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in your portfolio and those mutual funds, annuities, insurance products. Bob and I are going to show you where all the hidden costs are in your portfolio, show you how to reduce costs so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at diversification. Did you get hit really hard when the market sold off in December? Were you protected? We're going to show you how to bulletproof or safeguard your portfolio for retirement. And we're going to look at income. 
Income is so critical for retirement. How are you going to fill in that income gap when you stop working? If you stop working already, have you replaced your income? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And then finally, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies our family has worked on for four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? And all you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you are one of our next 10 callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there is no obligation and there's no cost, but there won't be a plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne, and I'm with my son, Rye Payne, and we're the pains of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, the Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management. And global stock markets tumbled this week on the back of a very disappointing jobs report. On top of Chinese exports dropping 21% in February, coupled with weak German industrial data. And after the European Central Bank cut its growth forecast to 1.1% causing investors to worry that the global economy's problems run much deeper than the U.S.-China trade dispute. And doesn't look like that's getting resolved anytime soon either. Investors chose pessimism, and they chose to ignore the good news that the European Central Bank would provide a series of new stimulus to support the European economy, including more cheap loans to the European banks, and a pledge to pause on interest rate increases until the end of the year. Of course, this week's pullback comes on the tail of the market's best start since 1991. And it was reasonable to expect a pause in the uptrend. However, the US market is trading at 16 and a half times earnings and the 10 year treasury bond is only yielding 2.6%. So the actual risk reward profile of the market is very favorable. Big gains in January and February have tended to bode well for the rest of the year. A positive January, February has historically led to a positive year 87% of the time with an average return of over 16% in total return. That's good news for us as long-term investors. But what I find surprising is the level of skepticism that remains on the part of the average investor versus this bull market, which will soon become the longest in history. Remarkably, individual investors have actually been net sellers of the market over the past decade. Since 2009, the roughly $1 trillion of inflows into stocks have been more than offset by the 1.3 trillion of outflows. Of course, once again, this is good news for investors. When it comes to investor sentiment, the market tends to be a contrarian. As legendary investor, Sir John Templeton has said in the past, bull markets are born on pessimism, grow on skepticism, and die on euphoria. And the level of skepticism on the part of average investors might mean that this big, booming bull market may last longer than anyone expects. If you're sitting there thinking, do I have a portfolio that's appropriate to my goals, to my dreams? Am I in line with my family's risk tolerance? Why sit there and wonder what you could know? Simply give us a call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Planning for retirement shouldn't feel like rocket science, but it's easy to get lost in the financial jargon. Every seventh conductor being connected by a non-reversible tremie pipe to the differential girdle spring on the up end of the gram meters. Let's clear up the confusion. Back to Ryan and Bob. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. Bob and I, we are simple men as you know, so we like to keep it simple for you. That's why we put together our latest guide, highlights from the new tax law, taxes around the corner, make sure you're up to speed with the new tax reform. You can download our guide for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. 
So, Bob, we often have a lot of lazy money lying around. What is your best definition of what lazy money is? I think it's one my children call and say, Dad, you got any money laying around you don't want? <laughs> I mean, is that so wrong? <laughs> no, and actually, that's not what lazy money is. Lazy money is money that's not keeping up with inflation. In other words, it's money that's guaranteed to lose. And that's the problem. People think that money's guaranteed to produce, and it really doesn't, does it, right? No, and it's you hear a lot of commercials now, and you hear a lot of the experts out there, quote unquote, talking about how, well, now you can just park some money in cash because now you're getting a good return. Maybe you're getting 2% or 2.5%, like, whoa, right? Really blow your mind. But Bob, inflation or the cost of living is going up by 2%. And we talk about this a lot. If I'm getting 2.5% on a money market fund, which I have to pay taxes on, by the way. So after taxes, mm -hmm. it's probably under 2%. You're still losing against the cost of living. You're actually losing its purchasing power. That's not a very good return, period. No, not at all, Ryan. I think especially as you get into retirement, you think, well, you know, I don't need to take any more risk. But see, risk isn't necessarily what you think it is. I mean, risk of running out of money can happen if your cost of living keeps going up. So how do you keep up with the cost of living, Roy? Well, I mean, it's, it's really simple, Bob, from our perspective, right? And your perspective too. It's just you need income you can live on. You need a portfolio that's producing income that you can live on. So aptly said, your money is lazy if it's not producing enough income to cover your lifestyle. And again, it's not even just the fact that you're getting maybe two, two and a half percent, but it's static, right, Bob? I mean, it's not really moving anywhere. Whereas if you own a portfolio of investments, the income is not only higher, but it's also increasing over time, which is huge. Yeah, it's really amazing today. You've got uh, you know blue chip stocks that are yielding way above the money market rate. You've got municipal bonds that are generating a tax-free return. I think the reason people have lazy money at times, Ry, is because they don't really pay attention to what the real rate of return is. What are some of the other reasons why people have that in their portfolio? Well, let's face it. I think we all still have a little bit of backlash from 2008 when the market just completely tanked. We talked about the 10-year anniversary of the bottom of the market when it hit 666. I still feel like that's fresh in our minds, right? We're always concerned that that shoe's going to drop. Market's going to capitulate like it did back in 2008. We're going to lose everything. And guess what now? We're 10 years older. We might be retired or close to retirement, and you just can't afford to have the same experience over again. Yeah, I think the key here, Rye, is flexibility. You need to be flexible. I mean, so many of my parents' generation used to make all their money and invest all their money in short-term CDs. When rates went to zero, they kind of panicked and sat there in cash where all they had to do is invest in something three or four or five years in maturity. So it's really about flexibility, wouldn't you say? I think it's about flexibility and also reminding yourself it's not an all or none proposition. Putting your money to work doesn't mean let's put it all into the stock market per se, right? Which always has the risk of going down like it did in December, but it's about having a diversified portfolio where you have a portfolio of bonds or fixed income, not bond funds, right? We don't like bond funds because right. we talked about as interest rates go up, that's a very bad place to be. But if you own your bonds outright, you don't have a lot of risk there. The bonds pay interest and at some point they come due. So last year, Bob, when the other shoe did kind of drop in December, you just mentioned that tax-free portfolio bonds was actually up for the year. So there's ways to protect yourself where it's never an all or none proposition, but you're receiving a lot more income than you would just sitting in cash. You know, that's a really good point, Rob. It really bothers me when I see these charlatans on TV, on the radio advertising. You don't want to be in that crash again like we're in 2008. You, know, you don't want to have your portfolio subject to that kind of risk. Well, who needs all their money at any one time? You know, nobody sold out of their entire portfolio when the market went down. And if you only took a little portion out, the rest of it went up 300, 400%. You know, it's not an all or none mentality, right? It's a, you know, I think that's the problem. The, the press, these charlatans in the press are telling you that, oh, you lost all that money in 2008. Well, if you were living off that portfolio, you only spent a portion of it, a small portion of it, and the rest of it was left there to reforest, you know, your portfolio. And it grows over time to the tune of three, four hundred percent since then. Isn't it portfolio like having a farm, right? Don't you just harvest part of the crop? Yeah, that, that's beautifully put, Bob. And I think that's the idea of diversification because if you got hit really hard in 2008, you got hit hard again when the market sold off, you know, at the end of the year, you probably didn't have a well diversified portfolio. And I think, you know, what you need to 
assess when you're building your portfolios, what you just said about time horizon, right? We're 10 years older than we were when the last significant recession happened. Your portfolio has to be positioned differently because you're probably going to be more dependent on your portfolio. And to your point, Bob, you don't want an all or none portfolio. So yes, you want to have some cash around because of course you need cash, but determining how much that number is, like a good rule of thumb is maybe six months worth of expenses. Once you get above and beyond that, you're starting getting into that risky category where you've got, you have too much cash, too much lazy money sitting around. And that's where you got to find that balance. And that just comes back to that financial plan, building a plan, figuring out what your goals are, and then building a portfolio that speaks to those goals. You know, Rye, those are all good points. And if you're thinking to yourself, I got to take care of this lazy money in my portfolio because I need to be financially healthy. If I'm thinking I need to know what I own in my portfolio is appropriate, I need to know what the fees I'm paying. I need to know if I'm positioned to succeed. Well, here's your opportunity to know. If you are one of our next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement. My son and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, it's a full holistic review where we're going to look at everything. It's the only review you'll ever need. All we need you to do is gather all your statements, stick them in a folder, stick them in a shopping bag, pick up the phone or text and make an appointment so that we can break down your portfolio to the three key elements of a successful strategy, diversification, cost, and income. You want to be certain that you don't have lazy money that's preventing you from achieving your dreams or achieving your goals. We want to be certain that you're diversified across asset classes and across all those accounts that you have at the various custodians. You know, cost of portfolios can be the cost of your success. We want to take that money out of those broker's pockets and put it in yours and make sure you're not being overcharged by your own portfolio. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over four decades? That's right. For 40 years, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your goals, to your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Give us a call or text now at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion to make sure you're on track for retirement at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So Bob, what did you find out there this week in the hard world of financial propaganda? Well, Rise, I looked over the portfolio. I saw that we marked exactly 10 years ago when the market dropped to its low and we'd been in a bull market for 10 years. And I open up my email and I get contrarian investor Stephen Kaplan calls the bull market anniversary a phony. A phony. Oh, man, I'm disappointed. I was ready to uh, get the cake out and get excited. So (laughs) why is he calling this bull market a phony? Well, according to him, the bull market ended last summer. Uh, I don't know. I guess I missed it. He said that the, <laughs> you know, the good times are over. Market was tremendously overvalued. That this is not a bull market. This is it's over. This was just a bear market rally. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably a very, very common sentiment right now, Bob. I'm I'm hearing from a lot of people that, oh man, 2018 was not a great year for stocks. Right, the S and P 500 was down six percent. Uh, we in for another year just like that. So I think a lot of this news like this out there is certainly uh, hyping that up, that we could just have another year where we maybe even go into a recession. Well, you know, what I love about these financial propaganda articles, right? First of all, we've been in a big boom in bull market now for 10 years, and it's been very profitable for bulls 
like you and I, but has been very painful for bears. And what really caught my attention and why I, I don't have any confidence in this individual investor is because he was quoting your old buddy from the Slope of Hope, Tim Knight. Oh, man. I am not. <laughs> that's my least favorite blogger of all time. Just to give a little background, Tim Knight, he has a blog called Slope of Hope, and he was bearish or he was betting against the market all the way to the market bottomed in March of when it hit 666. We talked about this 10 years ago. And he continued to be against the market and ended up being wrong, wrong, wrong again and kept betting against the market. Now it's been 10 years and he's still been wrong for a decade <laughs> <laughs> betting against the market. And he kind of pretends like it never really happened. Like his, you know, he's kind of like has this short term memory. He doesn't, he forgets that he actually has been wrong now for a decade. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Well, here's the thing, right? That's the problem with financial propaganda. You get these perma bulls or perma bears, and Tim Knight was certainly a perma bear. And he did ride the market down and made some nice returns. But once the market turns against him and went into a bull market, he didn't become bullish and wiped out all the gains he had. And the only way we knew that, and the reason I stopped even reading his blog was because he stopped posting his track record. That's your first sign that that man's in trouble. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All of a sudden, he decided not to put his track record up anymore because he had made so many bad decisions and then pretended like uh, he never had it up there. <laughs> that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's scary. Don't follow. Blo I think it's a good rule of thumb is not to follow bloggers for your financial advice. It can be very, very dangerous. Yeah. Actually, it's not fair. Don't to be a speculator. Truth. Be an investor. That always works better. Exactly right. Which you know, it goes back to what you and I talk about all the time. And when you're constructing your portfolio specifically for retirement, it's not about anticipating the ups and downs of the market. It's about creating an income stream that you can't outlive, right? And that actually goes to my next article, which plays back into what we just talked about in the last segment, and that's about cash again. I came across an hmm. article this past week that investors are taking the biggest cash position in a decade despite the market rally. So professional investors took their highest cash position in 10 years in January after a brutal fourth quarter sell-off according to Bank of America. And this just reflects what always happens, Bob, is we had a big panic back in December. A lot of mm -hmm. us panicked out of our portfolio. I think it was $260 billion went out of US equity funds. And basically sitting on the sidelines now and too nervous to get back in, even though the market's going up and up and up. So the question becomes, do I put the cash in or do I just keep waiting? And again, while you're waiting, you're earning nothing. It's a bad place to be. Oh, it really is, right? And that's the problem with uh, people who try to time the market when you sit there and you think, oh, the trend is my friend. Well, the trend wasn't your friend in December or was it your friend in January? It's hard to choose. So timing the market, you know, very often ends in tears. It's time in the market that makes the most sense and using those that volatility to your advantage, right? Because yes. markets move much more quickly than they used to. Well, well, two things about that, Bob, because you know, we all been there, right? I know I went to tons of parties, cocktail parties where the market went down big in December and like, oh, well, I got out in November or, oh, I was out in October. <laughs> well, now, first off, the market's already back to where it was in October, November. So what was the point of getting out? Secondly, if you build your portfolio so that you have an income stream that you can live on, it doesn't matter where the market is. That income stream comes in no matter what. I like to use the, the real estate analogy, Bob. You know, you have no idea if you own some rental properties, let's say. You don't know what the price mm -hmm. is on a day-to-day -day basis, but you sure know you're getting your rental check every month and you know exactly what that dollar amount is. It's the same thing with an investment portfolio if it's set up properly. It has nothing to do with the market's up or down. So there's no reason to be in or out, period. No, there is no reason, Ryan. It's and certainly, um, you know, cash is yielding more than it used to, but it just doesn't have any type of track record relative to what stocks and bonds and commodities have done over your lifetime. And the thing is, it's not about the last 10 years. It's about the next 20 to 30 years. And even if you're just starting retirement, you're going to be retired for a long time. You've got to keep that money compounding, keep it growing. And keep in mind, it's just like we talked about earlier. It's the only harvest part of the crop. You never eat the whole crop in one year. Otherwise, you're not going to live very long. Yeah, and just to add to that, you're not putting into one crop, right? That's the whole idea. So if you're sitting in cash right now and you're like, what should I do? Because another big concern is what's the political environment right now, which Bob, you had an amazing quote last week. You know, Warren Buffett, had sent, who's the greatest investor of all time, had basically said, why don't you give me the quote because it was so good. 
<laughs> Please. Well, what actually they they pressed him on his political views, which he doesn't like to give. But he said, "Hey, I've been invested under 14 presidents. Half of them were Democrats, and the other half, the other seven, were Republicans. And all he ever did was make money. So when it comes to politics, it really doesn't matter." Beautiful, beautiful. So if you're sitting there thinking to yourself. I'm tired of sitting in cash. I need a game plan. Let's stop wasting time. Let's stop waiting for this big market correction to happen or something to change in Washington because I suspect nothing is going to change in Washington. Here's your shot to do it. We still have a couple slots left. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself and Bob will run for you our famous total financial master plan. It's a full holistic review where we're going to look at the big picture for you. Simply bring in those statements. They probably came in for the month for February or print them off the computer, whatever. Bring them in the office. Bob and I are going to build you your own personalized financial portal where we can load everything in and get a bird's eye view of your entire financial situation and start making some good decisions. We're going to look at all those critical components. We're going to look at everything from fees. Yes, I know it's shocking. There are hidden costs in your investment portfolio, those mutual funds, those annuities, insurance products, brokerage products. Bob and I are going to show you where all the hidden costs are in your portfolio, show you how to reduce costs so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at income. Are you tired of figuring out when the market's going to go up or down? We're going to show you how to replace that income in retirement. Whether you're going to retire or you're retired now, we're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio so you're not dependent on the ups and downs of the market. And we're going to look at diversification. Did you get hit really hard in your portfolio back in December? Is your portfolio protected? We're going to show you how to safeguard your portfolio in retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now we've been working on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? And all you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of our next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached. There won't be a plan. Just text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with my son, Rye. And we're the pains. No pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Ready for what Bob and Ryan have to say next? All right, everyone, gird your loins. Let's find out. It's no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I, we try to give you the most common sense, practical advice you can use with your planning and investing every week. That's why we put together our latest guide, highlights from the new tax law, just to get you up to speed with the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. Highlights from the new tax law, just so you're up to speed with the new tax reform. Taxes around the corner. April 15th, it's coming. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. Simply go to BeBullish.com. That's BeBullish.com. You can subscribe to the show. And yes, you can see for yourself, but Bob's hair is real. But at BeBullish.com, you can really tell it's real. Anyway, check it out, BeBullish.com. And most weeks, you can catch most of our advisors, including myself, on all the major networks everywhere from CNBC, Fox Business News, Yahoo Finance, just talking about the latest state of the economy, the markets, giving our thoughts. You can check that out on our website as well at paincm.com. That's www.paincm.com. And if you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can always email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some pretty good questions. And we have our producer, Mark Haywood, in the studio to help us with those questions. What's shaking, Mark? Always good to be with you, gentlemen. I'll tell you what, we have finally made it to March. 
And you guys are going to have to keep me savvy when it comes to my finances because this time of year, when we enter March, March Madness gets kicked off. I'm telling you, all my personal finance goes out the window. If they have gear, I'm going to buy it. If I can get tickets to the game, I'm going to go. And so you're going to have to keep me behind the, you know, by the TV rather than spending my life savings on trying to make it out to the final four this year. Oh, man. Oh, that's the reason. That's the reason why Ryan and I call you Mark Madness. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm sure a lot of other guys are listening to the show right now thinking, yeah, I go broke this time of year, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it is. It's an exciting time of year. We'll be excited to th- see how things shake out. I know that y'all's Wildcats are having a good year, and my Tar Heels are right up there at the top. So, be interesting to see how it all plays out. Let's take a couple of questions this week. We've got one from Mark in Greenwich, Connecticut. He says, Bob, I was under the impression that the new tax laws would mainly benefit rich people, but I'm the definition of middle class, and it appears my taxes are going to be a lot lower this year than they were last year. Do you think I did something wrong? I don't see what the problem is here, Bob. No, I'll tell you what, uh, Mark, whenever you pay less tax, uh, don't reason why, just uh, hurry up and cash that refund check. We have an expression here at Paying Capital Management. You know, we believe in paying taxes. We're very patriotic, but render unto Caesar that which is Caesar. Don't give them any of yours. So, Mark, be very happy that you did benefit from the new tax law. However, a lot of people in Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, a lot of uh, our listeners got hit really hard because of the SALT limitations. And that's why you really have to do some planning because – You know, the more you pay in tax, the less you have to invest in your portfolio, the less money there is to compounding. So, Rye, there are some strategies that we've been employing with our clients to help them to overcome these recent tax increases. So, Rye, what are some of the things you would suggest that uh, Mark and some others uh, implement at this point? Well, first off, I'm... I'm shocked anyone in Connecticut saved on taxes this year. So, Mark, that's a that's a feat in itself. We should have a party for you. Right. I mean, the thing we talk about a lot is there's so many things you can do from a tax planning perspective. Now, it's a small thing, and Connecticut's a great state for this, where income taxes are, are definitely a big deal. But tax-free bonds, even if you're in a lower tax bracket, can still make a lot of sense. A lot of people... I've forgotten about tax-free bonds, I think, over the years, Bob, and, and haven't employed that in your portfolio. But if you structure it right, you can have a lot of tax-free income in your regular savings and brokerage accounts, and then put your more tax-inefficient investments in your retirement accounts. You can really set your portfolio up right. So a lot of times in retirement, we can keep you in a low bracket the whole way through, but it takes some conscious planning ahead of time. And I think one thing we all should revisit is looking at tax-free income from tax-free bonds. Now I'm going to make a caveat there, Bob. Don't do it with a bond fund. You and I don't mm-hmm. like bond funds. There's a lot of risk evil. there. That evil, exactly. Pure evil. Yes, evil. So, so having an institutionally managed portfolio, and I wouldn't necessarily go with just Connecticut bonds, but point is, look at some tax-free income. It's a huge advantage, especially if it's structured correctly. Yeah, so I agree, Ryan. You want to have a more tax-efficient portfolio, you know, use more passive indexes, which don't pay off capital gains every year, like mutual funds, actively traded mutual funds do. Look at contributing to a Roth IRA versus a regular IRA or Roth 401k. Look to do some Roth conversions. You know, you have to do some planning. You have to plan on minimizing taxes, maximizing income, and paying your fair share, but no more to the IRS or the state of Connecticut. All right, let's take another question now from Doris in Livingston, New Jersey. She says, Ryan, I'm very, very conservative as an investor, and I have about 80% of my 401k in a money market fund. I know that's probably not the best idea, but I'm just afraid of making the wrong choice at the wrong time if I take too much risk. How badly am I hurting myself with this approach? Well, first off, Doris, I have no idea how badly you're hurting yourself because I don't know what your retirement goals are, right? So we can't really determine if our asset allocation is too risky or too conservative till we know what we're trying to get to. So first and foremost, Bob and I preach this every week, having that financial plan is first. Once you have the plan in place, you can determine the exact amount of risk that you should have in your personal portfolio, which should always be different than everybody else's because your goals, your dreams are different than everybody else's. But this goes back to what we talked about in the whole show. If you are going to be more conservative, having a money market fund or CDs paying 2 2.5% is still a lousy return. I can't stress it enough. You still have to pay taxes on that. After taxes, 
you're losing money against purchasing power. And that's just like a cardinal sin, Bob, when it comes to investing. And even if Doris is so risk averse that she wants to keep money in a money market fund, you know, money market funds are not insured. You know, that dollar NAV or net asset value, that price that they quote is not guaranteed. So the very least, you know, Doris should put it into insured CDs to make certain that she can sleep at night. But, you know, that's still not going to overcome inflation. It's not going to be a good strategy. And again, that's where the old A to B approach comes in, right? Getting your portfolio from point A where you are now to point B your goals, factoring in the two biggest enemies out there, you know, taxes and then that hidden tax, inflation. Yeah, no, exactly right. And I just made you think of a, a gentleman I met with this past week who had several million dollars. He's set for life and he only had 40% of his money in the market. And he goes, I know I'm going conservative here and you're going to call me out on that. And I said, no, that's perfect. You don't need more risk. Yep. Don't take it. Yeah, and that's a problem. I see so many folks that come in that um, you know are in their 70s. They are retired. They're baby boomers like me. We love risk, but uh, not always the right thing to do. So let me ask you a question, Ryan. On a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of being financially organized, how does Mark and Doris fit that profile? Oof. I'm going to say negative one today. This is really poor, poor uh, oh. planning. <laughs> I am not. Negative no one, benevolence. Man. Boy, I'll tell you what. You're harsh. You're really harsh today. So let me ask all of you a question. On a scale of one to 10, how financially organized are you right now? Wouldn't you want to be a 10? Well, here's your chance. If you're one of our next few callers, you saved at least 200000 for retirement. Ryan and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, this is a full holistic review of everything you own will help you to get organized. Not only that, we're going to create your own 360 financial portal where you'll be able to see your current net worth and your portfolio value in real time. More importantly, we'll have you articulate your goals and we'll list those goals on your homepage so you can see not only what your goals are, but how you're progressing towards those goals on a daily basis. Or more importantly, whenever you feel like tuning in and signing into your web portal. This is a review that will look at everything. We're going to have you bring in all your statements. You know, just take the time that they're coming in this month, stick them in the shopping bag, stick them in a folder. You don't even have to open the envelopes. Just pick up the phone and text us, set up an appointment, and we're going to take your portfolio and break it down into one spreadsheet, which will analyze whether you have the three key elements of a successful strategy, diversification, cost, and income. You don't want to have any overlap in your portfolio. You know, when you have too much of a good thing, like you may have in December, you can see how harmful that can be to your portfolio. We want to bulletproof your portfolio against the inherent volatility of the equity markets. We want to look at your cost. I hate being overcharged, and I don't know about you. The last thing I want to find out is I'm being overcharged by my own portfolio. Let's take that money out of your advisor's pocket and put it back in your pocket where it belongs. An income. We want to be certain that we have that income that we all need in retirement. Not only once we are retired, our number one goal is to stay retired. And that requires repeatable, dependable income. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, answering that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for four decades. For over 40 years, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams, with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track. We have a couple slots left at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you have over 200000 saved for retirement, give us a call right now or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain financial radio.
With a constantly changing financial landscape, having a written, customized plan is more important than ever. Turn to the team at Paying Capital Management. Call or text 844-752-6692 to schedule a complimentary financial review. That's 844-752-6692. Find out how to better prepare for your financial future. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Bob and I like to give you practical, common sense advice you can use with your planning and investing. That's why we put together our latest guide, Highlights from the New Tax Law. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH, that's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, to 555-888. Highlights from the New Tax Law, just to get you up to speed with the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555 555- 888. That's the word bullish. 555-888. And we have a very, very special guest on the show. My brother, Bob's son, financial advisor at Payne Capital Management, Chris C. Payne. Or actually, it's Chris R. Payne. I said that incorrectly. What's up, Chris? How you doing, brother? Welcome to the show. Hey, you're right. Hey, Dad. It's an honor and a privilege, as always, to be here. I can't, I can't argue with Chris. Payne today, Chris. Always the best. Always the best. Well, Chris, this is our spotlight segment where we actually take a real financial plan and we uncover some of the flaws or what we call pain points, P-A-Y-N-E for the record. So you can avoid the same mistakes with your own planning investing. Why don't you talk about the case that you recently worked on? Yeah. So this is a couple down here in the the city of brotherly love. They had called in and asked me to review their current financial situation, investments and financial plan. He's retired. She's not. And the very first thing that they said to me when I sat down is that we don't want to take a lot of risk and we don't want to pay fees. So I wrote that down. And after taking a look at what they had, one of the things I noticed is that not only are they taking more risk than they should be taking, they're also paying a lot of fees. Well, and did they know that, Chris? What happened when you showed them the spreadsheet analyzing the, uh, the cost of their underlying portfolio? That's a good question, Dad. Not only were they very shocked, but uh, that shock quickly turned to anger. Oh, wow. Hmm. Well, I mean, the thing is, and we talk about this a lot, a lot of the fees on your investment portfolio are hidden. You don't even know you're paying it or paying them rather, Chris. I'm looking here like one of the accounts are paying like almost two and a half percent in fees. That's a lot of money. And they had no clue they were paying it. Exactly. And you know, what, one of the things that they said to me right off the bat was, well, how could we pay, be paying so many fees? The, the person that sold us this investment said that there weren't any fees. So That's what we did was, always the best. Are these are these the altruistic advisors that are out there that work for free? <laughs> They're the Red Cross. <laughs> the Red Cross of financial advisory. Exactly. Well, it, it it turns out that they were far from the Red Cross, and uh, you know, making a quite a substantial sum on this couple. Yeah, it's a, Go ahead. a sleight of hand trick, right? They tell you there's no fees that the the insurance company pays my fee, but where's the insurance company get the money? And that's why there's a a penalty to redeem. I think that the um, you know, the best way to handle that is, is just to call the insurance company and then and not call the insurance agent or the insurance salesperson to find out what these costs are. But it's uh, so easy to find out. It's just that people don't look hard enough. Exactly. And Dad, that's exactly what we did. We got on the phone with the insurance company and we had them go through step by step what each fee was and exactly what they were paying and for how long. Were they shocked? They were very shocked and, and also angry at the same time. Hmm. So what were the next steps, Chris? What would you, what'd you do to remedy the situation for them? So basically what I showed them, I said, okay, so here's what you're paying in fees today. Here's how much risk you're taking. And I basically compared that to the portfolio that we put together for them, uh, taking the risk down by about 15%, cutting their expenses. And really the net net is that we were able to increase the amount of cash flow that they were getting by almost $35,000 a year. Wow, wow, that's a lot of money. And that's the thing that blows my mind, Chris, is... I'm presuming this annuity, because a lot of these annuities, the way that they're pitched or sold is they tell you you can have an income for life, right? And to some extent, that math is they're just paying your money back to you over time because once you turn on that income stream, you give up your principal. Why in the world would you ever give up your principal if you could generate enough income on your investments to cover your lifestyle and never actually have to chew into your, but never give up your principal rather? Well, that was the one thing that they realized. The other thing they didn't know is that that money would be tied up for several years. 
And again, that was also very shocking to them. Yeah, illiquidity is a bad thing in retirement, not being able to access your money in layman's terms. Exactly. And one of the questions that, that he even asked me was, well, you know, what if I have a medical emergency? You know, what if I need a lot of money, you know, right away? And, you know, my answer was, you know, right on the contract, this is how much you're going to be penalized. You're not going to be able to get the full amount that you put back in. So your solution was, let's eliminate these high costs. Let's reduce your overall fee, increase your income and give you total liquidity. Sounds like a winner to me, buddy. Exactly. And, you know, it, again, you know, there, there would be some substantial expenses to taking some of these out right away. So, you know, we came up with a really great plan to gradually, you know, start to take these out just so that they would be able to maximize the amount of money they would have and not get heavily penalized. Yeah, that's, that's a good Isn't point. It's funny, Chris, that these people, they call these, uh, these insurance companies, call them penalties, but they're actually the commissions that you pay. Again, it's just a sleight of hand trick on the part <laughs> of the insurance industry. <laughs> that's a euphemism. A lot of euphemisms yeah, in the absolutely. financial world. You know, Dad, a sleight of hand that could that could really be detrimental to someone's long-term financial plans. Well, well I don't know well about done. you, Rob. This looks like a total financial masterpiece on the part of your brother. Chris, I'm proud that your last name is Payne this weekend. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, great job on this case. And if you're thinking to yourself, this is the kind of review I need. I need to know what fees I'm paying in my portfolio. I want to know what kind of income I can generate in retirement without touching my principal, here's your shot to do it. We still have a couple slots left. If you give us a call or text right now, myself, Bob, and my brother, Chris, will run for you our total financial master plan. And we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review just like this. All you need to do is get your statements. They may have just come in for, for February or print them off the computer, put them in a folder. If you bring them in the office, what we're going to do is we're going to build you your own personalized financial portal where we're going to get a bird's eye view of your entire financial picture. And we're going to look at all the critical elements. We're going to look at everything from fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in portfolios. This couple is paying way more in fees than they should have been. They're paying over 2.5% on some of their investments. We're going to show you where those hidden costs are and show you how to reduce cost on your portfolio over time so there's more money in your pocket. We're going to look at diversification. Did you get hit really hard back in December when the market sold off? We're going to show you how to protect your portfolio or safeguard it in retirement and we're going to look at income. We're able to increase the income on this portfolio by thirty-four grand a year to cover this couple's expenses. How are you going to cover your income in retirement if you're retired already? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, and we're going to determine that critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our family has been perfecting for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. We have a few spots open. And if you are one of our next few callers and you saved at least 200000 for your retirement, my family will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and no cost, but there won't be a plan unless you text or call right now, 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Well, another great show, Chris. Love having you on, brother. Again, Rai, it's always an honor and privilege to spend time with you and Dad. I mean, you know, you could say it one more time just for uh, for our listeners. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting, I'm becoming more obnoxious. No, we, we love having you, man. And BP, what do you got going for the rest of the day? We're all living vicariously through you down there in Florida. Well, actually, uh, Chris is living a life. I mean, he's on his way to Columbia, South America for a well-earned vacation. I'm just hoping for a t-shirt, Rye. How about you? <laughs> I mean, at the very least, we can get a t-shirt, Chris, since you're taking off for like two weeks. If you're lucky. <laughs> well, another great show, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.